Hey everybody, now this video should hopefully give you all an idea of how you might manage a class load of uh, database driven websites. So uh, it's just the way I do it, it's certainly not the only way to do it, but um, I found this after a few years of um, assessing websites using PHP and MySQL that this way seems to work fairly well. Now um, what I'm going to need to do is run a web server on my computer, so you can see the website we're looking at now is for a thing called WAMP server. Um, there are other options to run a web server on your own computer, such as XAMP. Uh, I have used WAMP server simply because I find it easier. So the best thing to do is to download the uh, version that's right for you, so either 32-bit or 64-bit. And when you install it, what you'll find it does is it sets up a folder called WAMP on your C drive. Um, and when you do install it, you'll be setting up the um, address as localhost, and I'll explain that why in a minute but basically inside WAMP there will be a www folder and that will probably come with some preset files I tend to delete all those and I create a new folder for every project or every new year group so you can see here I've got my 2015 year 13 student work folder and then there's the previous years in there so as I get a new lot and I'll have my year 12s coming soon, for, I'll create a new folder for them and they will email me their work and I'll put it on. Now um, what happens is when you run this, so you've installed WAMP server hopefully with no errors, just OK everything as you go through the install process. And let me think if I come in here. When you run it, you'll get a, a um, shortcut here. Just double click to run it, say yes. Now you do need administrator rights for that. So um, I can't run this on school computers um, in the labs for example. But anyway, so I, I run that and down here in the bottom you can see a little green W comes up. Now if you have problems, say for example if it comes up as orange or red, it refuses to run, uh, that's often because there's a port clash with Skype, as you can see I've got running over here, um, and you'd want to quit Skype um, before you run it up. Okay, So anyway, that's, that's running there. When you click on it, um, it has all these different options. Now. Uh, what I can do, if I go to localhost here, this will open up in my um, browser, it goes to the localhost address, and you can see it displays all the folders that I have, I'll bring that up to show you, all the folders there that I have appear as links. Okay, so if you've created a folder for your new class, it will appear on that web page as a link. Now that will only happen if you delete those files that appeared there uh, when you first install uh, and first install WAMP. So there'll be about three of them there. There'll be like a fav icon, um, an index page and so on. Remove those, put your own folder in and everything happens. Now anyway, once you've got that running, um, your students can just email you their work. And here we go, I've got this handy dandy email from myself with uh, Logan's work. So I would always just go ahead and save this into my WAMP folder. And it needs to be inside the www folder. So I'll just create a new one for this one, and I'm just going to call it my demo class. And I'd always save it into there. And the next step is obviously going to be to unzip that. So I'm going to find demo class. So if I just extract that, and I'm going to put it in, I have a feeling he's got his own folder in there, so let's just extract that. There we go. So you can see that's appeared. So now I can get rid of the zip file. And there is Logan's folder. And now that contains all of his work. You can see all the files belonging to his website. And he's also sent me some SQL code there for creating the databases. So what I would do next is, in my browser, go to localhost, but go to localhost slash phpMyAdmin. And this is how we're going to manage the databases. So in here, um, what I would suggest you do is you create uh, a bunch of databases. So to do that, you go to the databases link here, and you give them all the same prefix. So for example, it might be demo in this case, and then it's going to be Logan. I'll put Logan. There we go. And I could create that. And every time I create a new database with the same prefix, it groups them together. So you can see on the left-hand side here, my 2015 class. You can see every database has exactly the same prefix, 2015, year 13, underscore, and then the student name. Okay, so that way it just means that I can manage this on the left-hand side a little more easily. I don't end up with 
thousands and thousands of um, student databases. So that's one way of managing it quite nicely. So uh, I'd create that, that database. In fact, I'm actually just going to use the existing one I have for Logan in here. Oh, no I'm not. Oh, I'm going to create a brand new one. So I'm going to call this one demo underscore Logan. And what I'd encourage you to do is have them send you an export of their database. So if they have a database, like for example, where's Logan's here? Logan's database that he did for his project, he would click on export at the top here. Um, quick is fine, format is the SQL and just hit go. And that will export it and put it in his downloads folder. So um, I'll show you my folder, where is it? There it is there. So I would actually just make sure that he emails that to you. So if I just go back to this folder, I'll go put it in there now. There's demo. Yeah. Okay. So he should email through something like that. Okay. Um, now let's say, for example, he called his database. This project was about a book site called Bookworm. So say he calls it Bookworm. Uh, so what you're going to do is you in your demo. Oh, I've got to find demo now. In this database you create for him, instead of you having to recreate the database for each student, what you do now is you just click on import and navigate to the file that you want to do, and that is the SQL file that he um, sent to you. Let's see if I can find it again. We'll get there eventually. Uh, Bookworm.sql, there we go. And so when you hit go, that is going to create, you can see on the left hand side here, it's created all the tables and all the data inside them. So there's the book table, there's this category table, and so on. So now you can quite easily recreate the database. Now the thing is, remember, you've named it yourself, so the chances are very high that it will be named differently to what he did. And even if you try and tell the students what to name their databases, let's face it, they'll probably do it differently anyway. So what we're going to have to do to make his site work, because if I just go to localhost now and find my demo folder, there's Logan's folder. Um, you notice his index page breaks all over the place and it's because it cannot find this database called Bookworm because in his code that's the website that he was, or that's the database he was connecting to. So what we need to do is in here we find where his database connections um, code is. In this case I get all my kids to, to label this file dbconnect. So I open that up and I can see, okay, there's the name of the database that he was specifying. I've actually renamed that one demo underscore Logan. So I just save that. And now that should make this database work. So magically now it is pulling down all the information from the database uh, with no problems at all. Let's see, all the genres are appearing and it is pulling down all the books and all the information about the books. So it is that simple you're now ready to start marking the site and making sure it all works without error. So just to recap that I use WAMP server uh, when that installs that will in fact put a folder called WAMP on your C drive uh, and inside the www folder I would create a new folder for my class so in this case we called it demo class but you would may maybe want to name it with the year or the year group or whatever and then within there you would then create a new folder for each of your students and they will send you their work all zipped up you can just extract it into that folder um, then in phpMyAdmin so remember localhost slash phpMyAdmin um, create the database you want demo underscore Logan uh, and in this case making sure you have the same prefix for all your students and then all you have to do is go export oh sorry um, uh, where am I import import the SQL that they send you and it should create the database and then last step is find the code where they do their database connection and change the name of the database to the one that you created and that should make it work all going well <laughs> so um, I hope that helps if you do have questions please feel free to contact me um, I'll put my uh, oh actually you can contact me through YouTube so just get a hold of me that way and if you need any advice um, yeah let me know but I hope this helps